So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're here at the end of Buckeye Game Fest with our kind of debrief and wrap-up. So Buckeye Game Fest, the Buckeye Buckeye Game Fest indicates that it's held in Ohio, of all places. Very cool logo, I think. Yes. Almost as cool as this one. But, mm. you know. <laughs> uh, so it's held in Columbus, Ohio. Kind of the same location where they do Origins later in the year. Yeah. Um, but not, not the same uh, hotel, but this hotel is very close to the conference Yeah, they, they hold a bunch of events <clears throat> here, but most of that stuff in the community yeah. that right next door. So, uh, you know, we've been to that, we've been to this in 2019, so we're kind of more familiar with kind of the setting and the surroundings as well, which mm -hmm. is nice. Um, we were invited here as special guests to help promote the War Room, and kind of, we ran a few events there, which we'll talk about here in a bit. Yeah. But just wanted to kind of sit down and kind of go over what the experiences were like here, what this convention might offer people, and you know some of the some of the people we met and things we did. Mm -hmm. So, Buckeye Game Fest uh, this year, it's the first year they've done it in like three years, and they normally it used to be in September, kind of annually. This one was in the spring, and I think it's going to be Next that year's way, be in the spring, kind yeah. of going forward at least. And so the attendance here, I believe, was kind of like 250, 300 people. Mm -hmm. I think when we were here in 2019, it was closer to 400. Yeah. Uh, but it's so, that being said, it's not like a huge, massive con. It's not like the Gen Con where there's like tens of thousands of people every day. It's a very intimate, smaller, you know, I, we saw the same people kind of over and over and yes. over again walking around. So it, it's not as intimidating. It's not as overwhelming. Um, that one room was loud, though. The the main game room. Yes, where it's a lot of board games, Euro games, that kind right. of stuff. Right. You went to the war room, and while there were outbursts occasionally about bad die rolling or rules disagreements, very calm, serene. Yeah, lots of contemplative, yeah, moving stuff. So, so there's definitely a different vibe, and they were also separated by a great distance. So I felt like we were secluded. Yeah. Down on this end, and. Frankly, I, I enjoyed that. I think we had maybe 30 people at any one time in that. Yes. and, and it, Some you know, more than others. Yeah, and ebbs and flows as well. Yeah. And the other important part of that is is that all the regular kind of board and Euro game stuff is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the <clears> War Room <throat> opens on Monday. Yeah. And it's specifically done because here in Columbus, there are a number of kind of big war gaming groups. Mm -hmm. And... The guys will take off the whole week, and they'll set up like big OCS or GTS games or Napoleonics games. They had Dresden going, and I think they played it on starting on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, and they packed it up on Saturday. Yeah, so like, and they only got about forty percent of the game done. <laughs> so, but, so, which is it's just nice seeing the variety. Mm -hmm. So, if you like, mm -hmm. if you want to get in some of those big games, you can absolutely do that here. There's plenty of space for it, and there's also plenty of time if you're willing to commit to that as well. Yeah. I think next year we've talked about maybe doing an extra day to kind of maybe try some of that stuff as well, which is, I'll be excited yeah. for. Well, and doing an extra day so we're maybe not as pressed over the two or three days. So, And also some of our friends came earlier than I thought they were coming. We couldn't get off work, and that that's fine. Yeah, but they were all but, sending pictures, and I was very jealous. Yeah, I was like, oh. I'm like, I definitely wish I was there and not yeah. at home. Yeah, <laughs> doing work. So I, I had a really good time in the war room. We ran a couple of kind of official ticketed events. Mm -hmm. We ran uh, two sessions of a kind of coin teach and play. And that event consisted of we brought a bunch of coin games, and we set up two. And both sessions, we were able to run two four player coin games. Mm -hmm. uh, the first session, I sat in as a player and there were three others. You sat in with a player and had three others. I played mm -hmm. Cuba Libre and Fire in the Lake. <laughs> and you that, played, that's another story. You played Liberty or Death. Yep. Uh, and we played, you know, played for a good five hours, mm -hmm. taught some new people, so people hadn't had experience with those particular titles. I, I had a really good time doing that. Yeah. And then the second session, which was on the Saturday afternoon, we had four eight players, and then, so we weren't, we didn't play in those, so, which was actually kind of, I felt like that was a little bit refreshing in a way. Yeah. I was just able to teach 
and to referee and to be a rules resource mm -hmm. and a strategic resource if people had kind of questions how to evaluate the board. Yeah, and it was that, definitely a different experience from playing to just doing the GM. Yeah, and it, and it was also interesting because on, on the Saturday, the, the four players that I had, three of them had never played a coin game. Right. It was a, it was a very fresh green group, which was really cool. Yeah. And, and so it was like, I mean, it was ground up. Yeah. These are the basic principles, mm -hmm. and and so that it was very different from oh I've played one or two I kind of maybe know sort of what I might be doing I, yeah. like, I recognize what a card looks like mm -hmm. so that that was a very different experience I was I don't know I had a really good time running that event it was enjoyable to kind of share something that I really like with new people yeah well I, I think for me the the coin series is a series that I really enjoy we've played so many. I mean, we have all 10 of the volumes. We've played them multiple times. I played a lot of them solo, pushing stuff around. And I was actually surprised that I comfortably could, you know, not only teach the rules and the mechanics and the victory conditions, but try to give little strategy hints there, here and there. I've played Liberty or Death dozens of times. Not that I'm an expert by any means. In fact, I lost both games, but that, that's okay. But it was cool sharing those concepts. And I also always laugh. You get this really cool little fold-out menu of your commands and special abilities. And I remember the first time we played that, I was like, what in the world? Yes, it's a very dense page of text. Am I going to do? What am I trying to do? And you could see that in those players' faces, except for the couple that had played before. But even then... They're like, how do I get the French yeah. to do what I Liberty need Liberty or do? death and is even more intense on that level, I I would think. agree, yeah. Because it just... Well, there's so many nuances yes. and little... Well, you could also do this if you have a village or if you have a fort. And I, it was just really interesting to, one, experience teaching that, experience playing it and teaching it, and then also experience other people experiencing it for the first time. Yeah, I think that's a unique... Thing, and I really, really enjoyed doing that. We ended up ultimately, I think, teaching about five new people. Coin. Yeah, I taught at least five or six. At least three people. Four. I taught four people who had never played coin, and ever. I think I had three that had never played. That's seven who yeah. had never touched a coin game. Yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And I know, you know. A couple of them had been like, "Yes, I'm gonna like put put them on the P500, yeah, and I get yep. them." So you know, I'm hoping that we can kind of spark some more wargaming other people. Mm -hmm. And the, the other part of the reason why when we were setting this up is I'm like, coin games will be great because I think there's a lot of people who, outside of the wargame hobby, look at those and look. The pieces look similar to the pieces in my other yes, games. Yes, a Euro game. Like or it's, a... you know, it looks like a dude's on a map game. Yeah. And to some extent, they kind of are. And so it, it, it's an attractive prospect to people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they can be, it can be pretty intense looking at the rule book. Oh, yeah. And, but it plays, it plays for people, right? Well, I, I think coin is, it, frankly, it's a tractor beam. It, yeah. it really is one of those kinds of experiences that... People walking by who maybe had seen a coin game on Twitter or Facebook, but had never experienced it, were kind of, I mean, they were gawking, rubbernecking a little bit, trying to, what's going on here? And, ooh, that looks great. And, and frankly, liberty or death is just an absolutely well, it looks amazing, beautiful right? experience. In fact, I've said this many, many times. That's what got me into it. I saw those liberty or death pictures on social media, and I was like, Wow, what is that? I gotta have it. I love the American Revolution, and I, I saw that experience from others walking around. We only offered four different gaming sessions and two events, so we couldn't do it. I mean, we could have done it two or three times a, a day, but I think we would have been dead. Yes, frankly. that would that would be a lot because it because it does take a lot out of you. Mm -hmm. I, I think by the end of last night, right around eleven o'clock, as we were wrapping up, getting ready to play Pax Pamir. I, I was just knackered. So, but it was a really great experience to teach and, and see that experience. And if you haven't experienced coin games, come to a convention like this, sign up for an event like that. I think we're going to do that at Buckeye Game Fest again yeah, next year. Yeah, we're definitely, definitely, I want to do that again next year. And we've talked about uh, the the insurrection, uh, sorry, at, at Gen Con, you yes. know, doing that and, and offering some events. 
So and we, if we ever have that again, not sure when that's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, that won't be this year, but potentially next year if we can kind of see how yeah. things are and if, if well, we got to get organized. Interested. Yeah, you know, which is, we it was going to be a big thing in 2020. But yeah, yeah, there were other big things going on. So I had a blast doing that event. That was great. Played Wait, a couple it, of coin games. It really is why you come to conventions like this. You you want to experience something like that. You may not have the game. You may not want to own the game. But come and experience it. Enjoy it. Sup in its beauty and graciousness and awesomeness. And then go home and you may buy it yourself because it was just so cool. And it's also one of those kind of, it's just a, it's another opportunity to get four players. Because yeah. we sit at home, play a lot of two-player games. We kill each other all the time. And no offense, I'm not coming to a convention to sit down and play a two-player game. <laughs> right. Because I can do that at home. Yeah. What I can't yeah. do is play a four-player game or at home Or a five-player game. Right? Yeah. You've got to organize everyone to come over. That's a whole yeah. other thing. Conventions, you're like, this is at the time. All the war games are going to be here. It's mm -hmm. much easier to get those kinds of things played and set up. Yeah. And, and the four-player in that experience is the best, mm -hmm. without question. Yeah, that, that's what they're made for. Because... That was the other thing, and I'm sorry, I feel like we're going on and on. I know that's very rare for us. But seeing the the interdependency of each of the factions, but also that, that streak of, well, I'm doing this because it's for me. I know you want me to do this, but i got to build a village now. Yeah. Or I've got to muster here and protect Some, myself. Sometimes you've got to help yourself. Yeah, I've got to do my stuff. And, and it was funny because I remember when I was teaching the rules to at least the, the two, three new ones that I, I'm like, you're working together because you almost always share a victory condition. One of your two, you almost always share or they're very similar, but you're going to work together. But remember that knife is going to come out at some point and you're going to stab or yeah. get stabbed. And it's who's going to be the first one to pull Yeah. But that's what that, those games are about. Yeah, that that is absolutely what because that's what happened historically, and that's modeled and mimicked in that framework of the coin series. Yes. So, have we said enough on that? Yes. Okay. The events were great. I had a blast doing them. So, I want to do it again. Yes, <laughs> and we will. Yeah. What are What are some other games that we played? I mean, day one, we came here. It was Thursday night. It was late. It was after work. We drove up. Got here about eight eight thirty. Yep. And then uh, we hooked up with. Russ Wetley from Cardboard, Cardboard Conflicts, Conflicts and we played, which is a blog you should check out. Yes. Russ is a good dude. We played Churchill, yep, which uh, was great. We just played kind of an introductory scenario. We three, played the three, three turns because Russ had never played before, and it's a fairly abstract game. Yeah, but that was a blast to play there. It's like it's like it, it meet, always meeting is. a good old friend. Yeah, right? it's always a blast. And it was funny because we didn't have that with us. No, we yeah. were in the library just trying to. See something that sparked interest. I saw Mara Nostrum. I saw Seki Gahara, but it's only two player. And then, bam, Churchill. And I was like, that's it. We've got three Let's players. Do Let's it. do it. We busted it out. It was it was like putting on a well-worn pair of jeans, yes. even though we haven't played it for a couple of years. 2019. Yeah, the 20, Buckeye, Buckeye Game Fest. Buckeye Game the last time we played it. You, you know, we jumped into it, and it was... You know, comfortable felt felt similar. I, I remembered the strategies yeah, and was the going at come it. flooding back, and you're yeah. like, "Oh, let's let's go." That was a blast. And it's just such a grand experience because there's there's some real role playing elements with that conference table. You know, where the Russians are screaming yet as they're debating, and you know, and we're arguing. I, I'll never forget. And we forgot the rule, and I think that's why this happened. Very last conference, I am. I'm uh, the U.S., right? I'm Roosevelt. I'm the leader in Pacific theater and European theater. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I think I score victory points at the end of the yes. game if I have that. Just had forgotten. But you don't. <laughs> and so I was like, ooh, I kept those for... And, and you put on the table, I think, the Pacific theater leadership. One of the... It was, yeah. Euro, it was Europe. Was it Europe? Pacific had concluded before Europe had. Right. Yeah, which is so odd. <laughs> But you, you put it in the conference table, and I thought to myself, I don't want to lose that now. I've kept it for three turns. So I think I used Truman, because Roosevelt was dead. I used Truman to go ahead and pull that up into my area, got it off the table, because once again, I'm thinking, ooh, that's going to give me two or three victory points. Well, it didn't. I wasted my thing. And, <laughs> well, and, yeah. But, but that, that's the way that game is, and you have fun with it, enjoy it. And have a good time. Yeah, it's a great experience. It's a cool abstract. I have fun with that game. So that was kind of Thursday. We just did that. 
and then it was kind of with all the travel, it was time to go to bed. Yep. And then Friday morning, we got up, we did, we spent the morning setting up successes. Hoping to have played it, but our friends didn't, they had other plans. That's and okay, we played it it's later, all right. later on. <laughs> uh, and then we sat down, I believe, with Ardwolf. That was Friday oh, yeah. morning. So, mm-hmm. yeah, with successes takes a long time to set up for five players, by the way. Like an hour. <laughs> Uh, so then we then we sat down with Ardwolf for the rest of the morning, and he walked us through um, Smolensk, which is um, number seventeen in the OCS mm-hmm. series. Because I own an OCS game, and you know you, you see it bandied about all the time. It's been around for a long time, and it's always the rule book's very dense. It's quite an intense game, and it's a very logistics supply based game. Yeah, and so it kind of always been a bit scared off by that. And you know, the games are huge and often take well, well, an extremely long time. Well, as well. And, and, and their stacks this big, and they're very yeah. dense. And we like hex encounter games, but I think we both struggle with ones that have like twelve counter stacks and multiple and of those. multiple because you just end up knocking them over. But yeah, Gary sat down with about for about three hours. Yeah. And really took us through one half of one turn. He did the German turn. I think it was like turn, turn three. Th- yeah, I believe it was three. And it was fascinating. It was like a logistical puzzle. And supply depended. Everything depended on supply. Yes. It, and it was it, You it was cannot very overstate cool. that. Yeah. Really. I think we know that. But it in the game, that's how you move. That's how you fight. That's how you... Uh, you know, rebuild and replace you. I mean, it's just just everything. Yeah, everything outside of just like, you know, putting a gun to your infantry's back and sending them forward. Which the NKVD did. Costs supply. So. And so you're managing your supply points and you have to have HQs that can reach supply and then throw yep. it forwards and you've got trucks trucking it back and forth. The, the trucks the were, wagons. to me, one of the most hilarious parts because they had like 48 movement yeah, and they were just running up and down the road. Yeah, so you like it was just it was cool. You, you go back, pick some up, go forward, pick some up, and then go over here to start doing that next time. Right. Or you can drive some of your wagons forward as kind of like forward supply dumps. I think called they're extenders, called extenders. Yeah. They can then feed more out that way. Mm. And so it it was just very. I was very grateful that we were able to see the puzzle in action. Yeah. So yeah. from someone who knew it, when I read the rules. It, there's some context to it. Yeah, I've seen what that yeah. looks like, so it'd be easy to decipher. Yes, because it has its own kind of language of what you do, and I'm sure reading that can be very feel very abstract. I think the rule book's like sixty pages. Yeah, right? it's not, and apparently it's, it's an extremely daunting. good rule book. Yeah, because it's you know there's nineteen in the series. It's gone through a number of revisions, so yeah. it should be good, and it, apparently it is. But it still is. Not small. <laughs> no. So I was very grateful that he took the time to do that for us. It was well, like a big tutorial. It yeah. Really, it was really cool. And, and basically, I'll be honest, I'm not sure I've ever had much of an itch to really buy it and get into it, but I started getting online and looking for a copy of Smolensk. I think I found a couple in the 80 to 85 range, but then you had $15 of shipping, so it's... But, yeah. but I definitely am intrigued. I know you have reluctant uh, enemies, enemies yeah. which we should play because I think it's 20 or 30 counters on each side. Yeah, it's a very low counter density version of yeah. that. So. Just once again to get familiar with that system and understand the inner workings. Yeah, of it. and just to kind of play around with it ourselves. Yeah. So yeah, it, that was really cool. I had a really good time doing that. Thank you, Gary. Yes. Appreciate it. And then uh, what do we do in the afternoon? We um, played... Well, we did the first of our coin event. That was that was at five. That o'clock. was Friday night. Yeah, we we weren't here Thursday afternoon. We yeah, yeah. yeah. What did we do Friday afternoon then? Uh, we did the simulator. Yes, That's the Artemis simulator. Yeah. Which the Artemis Bridge Simulator. Mm-hmm. If you don't know, not a board game. Nope. Uh, video a video game. It's, yeah, it's like a <clears throat> big video game, and it's Star Trek: The Bridge Simulator. TM. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or not Star Trek. <laughs> not Star right? Trek. So it's fantastic. You literally mm-hmm. like, there's like five or six computers. I'm sat at one and I'm like the sensors and science guy. Mm-hmm. You're sat at one with a joystick. The You're the helm. Man. There's a weapon station. There's a communication station. There's an engineering station. And then you just have a captain in the middle yelling at everyone. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's 90 minutes and you've got this big grid with nebulas and anomalies and enemy bases and fleets and it's 
working together as a crew, yelling and screaming at each other, trying to find yeah. the enemies and destroy them. And what it's and, amazing. And the best part of that was everybody was really getting into their roles. Yes. You know, saying quips or quotes from Star Trek movies that we remember. And it was just, it was really fun. Um, very enjoyable. I started to lose my voice because I was really being communicative and having a good time as the helmsman. But... Uh, yeah. That was a grand... I played time. that at Gen Con like 10 mm-hmm. years ago, and I remember it had been amazing. And so here at Bokai Game Fest, they run it... Well, this year at least, they ran it a whole bunch. And it was free. It was free. Yeah. So you just, you just sign up and it's free. You know, you have to pay the 12, 15 bucks that you pay at Gen Con. So if you want to try that out, I'll happily do it we, with you here. And we did it twice. Yeah, we, we, did, we did it on Friday and we did it on... Saturday, Saturday night. It, which, it was just, it was just. So great. that that tells you how good it was and interesting. And you're literally going out, and you're attacking enemy ships, enemy bases, preventing them from getting to your bases. We lost a base in that last one last night, but very cool. It was a scenario, and I I really enjoyed it. And at the end, if you're 90 minutes, yeah, it pulls up all of your statistics of how many guys you killed, how many torpedoes you launched. Yeah. It kind of like a score. Your rank, and stuff, but like, yeah. It's the it's the role playing and. <laughs> The working together as a team, great fun. Yeah. Madness and chaos and hilarity ensues. Oh yeah. And then there are times where like you're doing it really efficiently and you're like, yeah, we're, we're pretty good we're at pretty this. We're pretty good at this. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I love it. I have, a, yeah. I have a blast doing that, and I'm really cool. Glad they offer that. It's cool that they have that here. Yes. I, I thought that was neat. So then we did uh, mm-hmm. our first coin event that night. Mm-hmm. It lasted about five hours. It was great time. Uh, we spent a long time talking about that. So <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, we did that. And but stage. yeah, that night I did Liberty or Death with my group and played. You did Cuba Libre with your group and played. Yeah. So and it ended prematurely. Yeah, we had two. So we kind of got through about 10 cards or so. And then we had a propaganda card and then an event card and another propaganda card. At which point the government won. Uh, so it was uh, that ended very quickly. And it was kind of like, it was cool because people had learned, but it was also like, Oh man, oh, that was a little bit disappointing. Yeah. And so then I was like, "What well, do we want to just set it up and go again? And everyone was like, yeah, let's do it. But then uh, one of your players, Eric, was like, I've got fire in the lake upstairs. I can mm-hmm. just go grab that. And so <laughs> we did. We set that up. And I set up the short scenario, which is only three coup cards. And we played that. We got through two coup cards. And on the second one, uh, the Arvin one. I believe, yes. And all the while, you still hadn't finished Liberty or Death, which was only a three-year scenario well, as well. I, I, I believe it's probably a reflection of the leader and teacher of the session. Yes. I taught them so well that they were able to actually win uh-huh, it. No, it that's not great. what I was thinking. It was, it was very, very good. But uh, so it was, was cool. it was just funny. <laughs> like We got through two games that ended horribly. Yeah. And it was sort of that. So, but it was cool in a way to just like show people like we were yeah, the system. And, it was great. Yeah. and how different they can be, but some of the stuff carries over. Your like your yeah. inherent knowledge is of how the cards and the activations work, mm-hmm. and then some of the kinds of things that you're trying to do carry over between yeah. a number of the games, which was cool. Um, and then Saturday morning, we did play successes, finally. which was an absolute blast. Yeah, we had five players. And played the five-player scenario that's in the book. That was Which is like two time. turns. It's not a long scenario. No. It t- it, how long did we play that for? We played for two hours and only got through one turn. And, and, and then we had an event we had to go to. So And w- it was a lot of learning as well. Yeah. So I think to do that, you'd only need one more hour. Probably, I, I really yeah. think that. Uh, so that was a very cool... That was our first ever time playing Successes. And it's the new fourth edition from Phalanx. Mm-hmm. And so it's been around the block a number of times. People love it. Uh, people were like, that was a game that people came over to look at. It was, because it's beautiful. The production values off the chart. Yeah. And, and they've all played it. And yeah, so they were yeah. like, you know, it's, it was the old war gamers who came over like, oh, I've got fun memories of that. I've yeah. got the first edition on my shelf still. Mm-hmm. And they look at the nice new fresh one. Like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And then you end up with like four copies of the same game with different editions <laughs> on your shelf. Uh, but that was a really neat game to kind of learn and to play around with. There's yeah. a lot more to explore in there with the two player versions, which are much longer. And, you know, even the three or four player versions, I've heard the four player is very good because mm. uh, it's a little bit longer and maybe 
slightly more balanced. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so there's a ton more to explore in there, which I'm excited to try and do. Probably at, at, at other conventions and stuff like that in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was Saturday and, morning. And I think everybody said they would they would play it again, and oh, that's yeah. always a good sign. Well, and so. it, I was a little bit nervous going into that because the rule book is pretty big, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of chrome and moving parts and other bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Some of that stuff's in the early game, which w had already kind of concluded yeah, we prior to our it. setup. Yep. So, which was actually kind of nice that we could just kind of learn this part of mm -hmm. it and didn't have to worry about some of the extra bits where it's all the exceptions yeah, yeah. and all the weird other bits and pieces you got to take care of. So that I appreciate that in that way. But yeah, I would definitely play that again. Yeah, um, me too. Then, so that was Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, we did our second coin event mm -hmm. where we had eight players sat down playing, once again, Liberty or Death on your side. And then Cuba Libre on my side, it went slightly longer than just the one, the, the basically the one cue card, which was nice. But that was ours went the full three, yes, three years. It was nice because I in that one it, I had like almost all new players, and I don't know if that's mm -hmm. a Saturday thing because some people can't take the whole you know a long weekend off. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people, a lot of people came just for Saturday. Yeah. Oh and, yeah, that's normal. And the events were signed up for, which was it, it was really cool to see that, that that was kind of all fleshed out, and I we didn't have to kind of fill it out. You're able just to GM on your own. I know that yeah, was yeah. that was a kind of a neat and mm -hmm. quite a different experience. Then after that, we did once again the Artemis Bridge Simulator mm -hmm. because can't get enough of that, and once again it's free. Uh, so we got a bunch of people together and did that again. Mm -hmm. Did different stations to ex to kind of experience more yeah. of that stuff. That was interesting too because I had been the helmsman the first one and had been pretty successful at it. Then I was engineering and I remember thinking, well, I could drive the ship better than that, <laughs> you know. And I was struggling with everything else, but it, it was cool to experience. I'd like to do the weapons because that looked really very intense, very intense. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, very cool, cool experience. Yeah, I, that, I'd love to do it again. I, I, um, it was so cool having that very available and be able to do it a couple of times. Yeah, I, I love doing that. Uh, and the, don't don't you think somebody makes a video game of that? Yeah, you can buy that. Okay, it's you can like that specific specifically okay. that program, like a PC game. Yeah, or something. you can buy you can buy a bundle of it, and you just have you got to have wow. you got to have the group to do it. Sure, everyone gets kind of a code and has yeah. it on their you computers. Log in. And yeah, that would be really over. fun. You can do it. But you know, here it's nice because you're all in person. Yeah, yeah. You don't have all the crappy microphones and stuff. Sure. <laughs> Which is it was neat. So if you have an opportunity, please <clears throat> try that out. Uh, and then the last thing that we did after that was we played Pax Premier Second Edition. Five player. Five player. And David Thompson, Russ, uh, Ed, one of the guys that played in our. Yes. Um, he played in the coin of it and Liberty or Death. Play, yeah, the second one. Yeah, that was fun. Always a good game. A game where I sat there for the first 30 minutes. Even though I've played it four or five other times. Yeah. What am I doing here? It's, what it's, am I trying to do? It's been a while, so yeah. I was trying to remember like how to make all of the things work yeah. together. And it was a very a somewhat chaotic game in the sense that it was like, I think I finally figured out what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then I had no control over the victory conditions. Right. So I'm like, all right, ditch my allegiance, try to join one of the alliances. Yeah. And then we were in a good position, and then I was trying to help out, and then everything kind of flipped the other way. And then I, I, I'm not so like, sure. I'm not so sure at that point it wasn't I was decided of it, a couple of turns before for all of us. But it's so hard to see that it, it was. The, but the now, way that, yep. it, I, it's such a cool game. It's it very dynamic very cool. in that way. Well, it's it's a mixture of area control. You've also got this very odd little cylinder thing where if you if yeah. it doesn't end that way, you can end it that way, and the guy that won had more cylinders on the map than everyone else. And it was just, it was cool. It was a little uh, deflating at the end because I felt like, oh, we were really going to win this and do it. And I it mean, just, it, it collapsed crumbled. very yeah. quickly as well. It was very interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's an, it's an incredible game. <clears throat> there are so many layers and interconnecting parts that to be good at it, you have to probably be very quite experienced. Yeah, you're gonna have to play that five or ten times to really get it. And there's a and solo, regularly. Yeah, and there's a solo bot, and we played against that. We played a, a three-player game with the bot two years ago. Yeah, and it was an interesting experience. It pushed us. 
It's just very difficult. Yeah, it, just, it, it is. It's hard to beat. Yeah, it was... I, I love that game. It was nice yeah. to kind of get that out again as well. And I think Russ had never played. Oh. And Ed and David had played a little bit fairly recently. Got and it. then we played a, a few times much earlier, like a couple of years ago. Yeah. So it was kind of like, uh, trying to get back into it. But it was... It, it's a fun game. It's beautiful to play with as well. Yeah. It, it's one of those games where you, you see it and people are like... Yeah, yeah. So it's great to play with. It's a very tactile game. I think that's everything that we did so far. I think we're going to sit down with David Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Try to do an interview, talk to him about his upcoming stuff. He's got a bunch that he's working on. So that'll kind of be our last thing, and then we're going to head on back to Indianapolis and spend the rest of Sunday with our family. So, but yeah, it's been a really good time, played some really good games mm-hmm. and met a lot of really cool people. Uh, you know, people that we've interacted with online a number of times. But you get to meet them. Kind of meet them in people, in person. Even Ed, he, uh, mm-hmm. you know, play, played a couple of games with him. He's started a new company yeah. where he makes counter trays. Very good counter and trays. His company is called Aegis Storage. And you can get them on flyingbuffalo.com. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he Do you was, remember how much they are a piece? So they come in packs of five, five. and I think it's uh, they're like 20 odd bucks. Okay. And so, but like, they don't have the same lip as the GMT ones. So as such, they're a little bit bigger whilst being the same footprint. And yeah. as such, the cells are that much bigger where it, it really I could fit every Andy and Abyss component into it. Yep. It which was, was pretty, pretty intense. And, uh, yeah, so he was very gracious and donated a couple of those to us. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I'm, like, doing putting stuff in games already. So I know that counter trays is a, is a big thing for most it's of us for orga- organization and storage. I know GMT right now I think is out. As they regularly I, are. I was looking about two weeks ago, and I think they were already out. So give those a, a view, flyingbuffalo.com. They're really nice. I was very impressed with the yeah. quality, the feel, the weight. And they really take up no more space than it's a normal GMT tray. Identical space, yeah, but in the just box. a maximization of the footprint. I, give give them a, give them a try. They're I think they're well worth it. But yeah, you know, it, it's just neat meeting so many people who like have their hands in the hobbies. Yeah, and there's a couple of designers here, like Brent from Arm Trade Dragoons is here. Yep. Gary from Ar- yeah, Ard Ard Wolf. Wolf. Like there's content Russ. creators, there's bloggers, there's mm-hmm. you know production people, designers. And it's a tiny little convention, and yeah. everyone's friends, and I just love that. I'd really like to see next year, because it's in April again next year. They haven't set the weekend yet. They have. I know, but they told us not to say it. Until today. Oh, okay. Which, that's the time of recording. This will come out a few days later. So it's the 27th through 30th, yes. right? The end of April. So I, I would really like to challenge people that live... You know, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. If you're anywhere in the Midwest. It's an hour and a half to three hour trip. Just come on over. We'll play some games together. We'll have a good time. You'll meet some new people, have some new experiences. I'd love to have 50 new people come next it'd be, year it'd and, be great. and build our family. So There's so much space and time for war gaming. And I think oh, yeah. we're going to do probably a better job of like scheduling some of our Yeah, we'll, we'll do a couple more events. And I think that'll, you know, so if you want to play some big games, we'll yeah. have events for some of those things and just sign on up and we'll play yeah. with you. It'll be great. Yeah. So I, again, had a blast here at Buckeye Game Fest. Appreciate BGF for having us here. Yep, very gracious. Uh, it was very awesome. Us. And, yeah, we'll do this again next year. So I appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.